All right, we'll begin Ole Miss's press conference, uh, starting off with a opening statement from Coach Mike Bianco. If you have a question, use the hand raise feature and you'll be called upon afterwards. Um, yeah, I guess the, the best best way to start is to just say what, what I think everybody that's on this, you know, saw what an incredible, uh, you know, college baseball game and, uh, you know, of course, well-pitched game by both sides. Of course, you know, Doug uh, was tremendous and uh, I think, you know, tied a school record, if I'm not mistaken, with strikeouts tonight with 16 and, and uh, their guy, Hubert, uh, you know, really, you know, matched him and uh, early on and we just uh, it was one of those games where uh, you know unfortunately it comes down to you know a couple plays and uh, you know uh, we were able to just make a couple more plays than them but you know certainly a, a super pitched game by them and of course Broadway you know continues to uh, you know be you know uh, super you know at the end of the ball game and it's it's what, what a luxury to have you know a guy like uh, Taylor you know to be able to call on uh, but yeah again I think it was all about pitching you know, uh, our, our, from our side and their side, and uh, uh, not much offense on either side. Thank you, Garrett. Mike, after the fifth inning, um, Doug was pushing 100 pitches. Uh, he'd given up the three runs. His velocity was a little bit down. And then he dug, in, dug deep and found it to keep going. What did you see from him that allowed him to keep extending and go that, that long? Well, that's, that's Doug, you know. And, uh, um, you know, we've all seen it, seen it, Ben. Where, where, you know, he can, he, when the game's on the line, he can take it to another gear. And um, we were talking about that on the radio and, you know, watched him. Not that it's been a ton, but, you know, he's a guy that, you know, can throw 110, 115, 120 pitches. You, you don't want to do that, obviously, every week. Uh, but there's some guys that, you know, that, that hit a wall at 90 or 95. And, you know, he can always, with the game on the line, you know, reach back and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, get a, get a little something extra. And, you know, obviously we, we needed all of that tonight. Trey? At this point, does this feel like in the best pitching performance from Doug in his career so far? Wow. Uh, not ready for that, Trey. I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, certainly – uh, when you talk about you know moments and uh, and and what we needed, I mean he was he was really good uh, you know a couple of years ago against Clemson here in game two, uh, and uh, you know almost threw a complete game if I remember right. And so uh, he's pitched a ton of big games. I'm not going to go out on a limb and, and and pick which one, but you know certainly uh, we needed every bit of you know Doug today. Nick. Mike, you've talked a lot this year about how confident this team is in close games, big moments like this. Uh, what was the dugout atmosphere like when the lead went down? How, how did you guys kind of react in the dugout to, to the deficit and how did you climb back? I think they handled it great. You know, uh, obviously it was a, uh, kind of a kick in the gut. Uh, you know, we, we had that lead and, and unfortunately we weren't able to add on to that lead. But, you know, uh, credit Hubert for that. You know, uh, I think it's, you know, it was more him. Uh, and less of what we didn't do. Uh, but, uh, but I thought our guys handled it well. Like you said, I, I, you know, we've, we've handled those, those moments well all year, you know, uh, being able to, uh, to handle the adversity. This team just continues to uh, handle, you know, tough, tough moments. And uh, again, you know, I thought uh, after a couple home runs, you know, and you, you lose the lead, you know, we hung in there. We kind of spoiled a, a, an inning that we had with bases loaded, uh, but again, the guys, you know, continued to hang in there and, and continue to, to set it up offensively. Adam. Coach, could you just talk a little bit about the uh, play that uh, Jacob made uh, coming over the first? Yeah, that was, you know, that was a huge play, um, you know, in the eighth inning, you know, Jacob had two. Uh, you know, relatively routine ground balls, you know, to start the inning. Uh, and then uh, Martin, uh, I think it was Martin, uh, the, smoked the ball up the middle off, you know, uh, Broadway's calf and uh, uh, looked like it was going to be a base hit. And, uh, you know, Gonzo comes across and bare hands it and makes a huge play. And in games like this, you know, sometimes those are, those are game winners. And uh, uh, when, you, when you look at that, you know, not only do, does it keep the tying run off the plate, but it also, uh, you know, uh, uh, it keeps Cabell 
from batting, you know, uh, being the, the winning run at the plate uh, with, again, you know, a lot more pressure, I think, than having to face him to, to start off an inning. So, you know, giant, giant play by Jacob. Chris. Mike, can you talk a little bit about the crowd atmosphere? From my vantage point, the crowd seemed to be hanging literally on every pitch from Doug. What yeah. energy does that provide y'all? Well, you know, that's one of the you know, big reasons that, you know, you want to be at home. And when you look at it statistically, why the, the home team and regionals do so well. Uh, and that's one of, you know, always one of our goals is to, to play play at home. Uh, it's, uh, uh, but tonight, you know, in those types of games, kind of that heavyweight boxing match, uh, you need that. You need the crowd. And uh, I thought, you know, the crowd kind of, you know, helped Doug in some of those tough innings and they could feel the, the, the big moments. Uh, and then, you know, I think the place got really loud there at the end uh, for the last six outs when, when Taylor took over. Thank you. Nick. Mike, what happened with TJ on the kickoff? And what do you kind of say to a guy after something like that happened to him? What the hell are you doing? You know, um, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't even see it to be honest with you. I mean, I saw, saw, the out. I, I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm assuming we'll have to see it on film, but uh, uh, my, my guess is, you know, just you got you know caught off and uh, you know not not paying attention and got a little too far off, you know, the base obviously. Uh, but but I don't I don't see if he I didn't know if he slipped or I didn't see any of that. Back my to first Trey. answer probably the correct answer. Back to Trey. Yeah, Mike, I'm curious just how before this game, knowing what's at stake specifically for this sun, the Saturday winner's bracket game, do you want the team to feel that pressure knowing that, you know, a difference, depending on the result today, the difference is having to win three games between winning one game? I, I don't understand the question. Do I want my team to feel the pressure? Like, I mean, not feel the pressure, more so like, do you, I don't know how to explain this now that I think about it. Do you want them to be aware of that? Or is that something that, you know, just going out there with the way this team's played all year, is it just, you know, it's another ball game? I, I think I know what you're asking. And, you know, did we sit in the pregame and say, hey, this, this is why this game is so important. Um, we don't do that, you know. I, you know but but uh, I think you give the, you're not giving those guys enough credit. You know, uh, they, they, as much as we try them, try to tell them, hey, don't read, you know, the stuff on the internet, try to stay out of the news and all the blogs and all that, uh, all the predictions and all those things. Uh, this is the life uh, in their generation. You know, they know so much more than we ever thought we'd know, right? You know, growing up. And so they, they know, you know, how it works. And so uh, the, to me, the, the point is to, to not, you know, um, you know, look at it that way, uh, to, to look at it as, yeah, it's a huge moment. We all understand. But at the end of the day, you know, you, when you hear the process and what does that mean, control what you can control and every, what does that mean? It means the best way to have success is to not think about how big the moment is you know the best way to have success is to not think that if i don't get a hit you know uh, we're going to lose right or my batting average is going to go down the best way to you know, to have success is just be where your feet are you know to, to be able to control what you can control and have a quality at bat you know make a good pitch play defense but the tough thing is to try to block out all the stuff that you're talking about so no absolutely not we don't sit there beforehand and you know talk about how uh, big the game is all right, Coach, thank you for your time. Good win. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks, Seth. We'll get going with Kevin Graham. First question from Ben Garrett. Kevin, there in the fifth, y'all lost the lead. Um, you know, Doug looked like he was kind of gassed out a little bit, but then he just fires it up and turns it up. Did that give y'all a lift? And was that really the catalyst for, to, that allowed y'all to come back and battle back? Well, I mean, we've come back so many times this year from crazy deficits, but that's what Doug does. Uh, you know, I mean, if you look even as Velo, I think from 100 pitches on, it's the hardest he'll throw in the game. And it's just cool to watch. I mean, no one, no one in Doug had any doubts that Doug was going to throw up more zeros for us and we were going to scrap a few runs on the board. As far as the offense, only four hits. You walked five times. But uh, what did they do well that really limited you all? 
Uh, yeah, he was he was pitching both sides of the plate with his fastball, uh, mixing that curveball in and uh, in every count for strikes, which makes it tough. You know, when you locate that fastball both sides of the plate, it's hard to just sit there and and uh, you know really really sit on it and get after it when he's locating it like that. Nick. You were there in the on deck circle when Tim was trying to chug out that error there. What, what did you see from him? And did you know he had that kind of speed in him, that kind of hustle in him with the with the Nate? Yeah, he was flying, you know. Uh what a 90 he gave us there and we needed we needed all of it. Does anybody else have a oh, excuse me, does anybody else have a question for Kevin? All right, Kevin, appreciate it. Finally, we'll have Doug Nikhazy. If you have a question for Doug, please raise your hand. Yeah. Nope. There. Go ahead, Ben. Doug, um, you look like you're fading there in the fifth, man. What allowed you to flip the switch and finish that thing out and really provide the energy it seemed like that the team needed to get through it? Yeah, it's in moments like that when you're in the postseason when you start to think about how many chances you're going to get to wear this jersey ever again. So um, when you when you get on that, we get in those moments like that, that's when um, you just kind of flip a switch and everything starts to change when you start looking at things differently. Could you sense that the team needed a little? And because you had a lot of energy when you're coming off, and every time you seem to strike out a guy, it seems like you're turning to the dugout. Did you sense that they needed a little bit of an energy jolt from you? Yeah, um, I love firing up the dugout. That's part of the fun of being a good pitcher is just trying to command the energy. I, I think I've talked about it before. I think a pitcher, when they're on the mound, they um, they command the energy of the game, and they bring up people, and they can really make a difference with how they go about pitching. So, um, yeah, I was always looking towards the dugout and just try to get those bats going. Chris Muller. Doug, it felt like uh, Swayze was really alive tonight. Talk about the energy that provided you. Oh, it was everything. They were fantastic tonight. Uh, we had the towels going, so we were getting them pumped up, and then they were just giving it right back to us. So it was just an electric at atmosphere to play in. And when our fans are like that, it's almost hard for us to lose. When we show up like that, we really do so – we are just so alive in the crowd. Uh, it gives us all a boost, and it gives us – it makes it a lot more fun. Chase? Yeah, Doug, I mean, obviously everything was kind of working, but what, what, how do you sort of rate your stuff, and did you do anything different kind of second, third time through? Yeah, early in the game, I thought that my breaking balls were really bad. Um, I couldn't really locate them that well. Um, I think, like, first time through the lineup, they, it was just kind of me just throwing fastballs through them, and – that, that worked for a little bit. And then obviously second time through the lineup or wherever it was, um, fastball slowed down a little bit and they started getting barrels to it. So that's when I just started to try and throw the crap out of the curveball and um, start bouncing a little bit, use their aggressive mentality when they're hitting to my advantage and just start bouncing them a little bit and making them swing more. Sorry, what would you yell coming off in the six there? Looked like you kind of got a little more animated that time. <sighs> I said I said something to the extent of we ain't done yet or something just like this this we're not done something like that I was just trying to get them going but I don't know maybe some provocatives I don't know Nick Doug I think you guys are something like twenty one and ten this year when games decided by three or less just where do you think that comes from that you guys are able to play so well in close games. By the way, love your Twitter. You the facts fantastic. Um, I don't know. We we always play. I I think this team, and I think it's a key element to a team that can go deep into the postseason is someone when you win the close ball games because everyone can show up one day and just hit the crap out of the ball or throw a shutout. Like, but we've been so good in these games. I think just because our will to win and our just, I think we're just being rebs. Um, every all encompassing. So. Being able to do all those things allows us to win those close games. Back to Ben. You touched on it, Doug, that your fastball kind of lost a little bit of life there in the fifth. I think it was touching like 88 at the max. But then you started throwing harder as uh, the game went on in the sixth and the seventh. How did you – how were you able to rediscover your velocity? 
Uh, just getting amped up, um, honestly. Really just um, – I think sometimes I can lose my legs, not to get too mechanical, but I think sometimes I can lose my legs and just try and throw my throw my wing as hard as I can and just try and amp it up. But, um, you know, trying to stay in my legs, uh, stay closed a little bit longer and try and reach in the mitt, all those, all those things together. You want to keep it simple when you're on the mound, but all those things tied together allowed me to get deeper into that ball game. All right, before we get any provocatives from Doug, that's all for him tonight. Uh, Doug, thank you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Howdy, howdy.